Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, just wanted to do a morning Bible read of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. A sister in Christ sent me these verses to encourage me. Um, so I want to do a little bit of a Bible reading and an update to what's going on. So if you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28, I want to read this real quick. Or if we can go back to 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God hath set some in the, in the church, first apostles, there's no more apostles today, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, people to help each other, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Brother, sister in Christ, God has given you, brother, sister, there's nobody that has zero gifts. God has given you a gift, the gift to be able to help somebody, a brother, sister in Christ. We're all part of the ministry of reconciliation, the gift of learning about medicines, whether it's herbal medicines, how to splint a broken leg, you know, reset a broken leg, uh, tongues, languages, that's what tongues is talking about here. All right. So we all have gifts, and the Lord has blessed me, brother, says Christ, with teaching, and that's what I feel uh, through the Word of God and through my talking with the Lord. I spent a week now um, just spending it going through the Old Testament and going through the New Testament. Right now I'm in Galatians and the New Testament. And in the Old Testament, I went from Genesis, I'm up to 2 Samuel, listening to Alexander Scorby read the Old Testament, and I'm stopping it every once in a while saying, Lord, did he just say what I think he said? Could this be applied to this for instruction in righteousness? And man, what was it like back then, Lord? And I talk with the Lord about the Word, and this past week, uh, I've been spending a lot of time with the Lord in prayer and in His Word, and I've been getting away from the news for the most part, the news, um, watching people online, brethren online, just taking a break, and uh, just trying to get my heart sorted out with the Lord, right? With, make sure my heart's right with the Lord and before I get really back into ministry again after what's happened recently. But, but the book of Galatians, after going through it so many times, after going through it this time, brothers and sisters of Christ, there's still people out there. It's not, because it's, I want to respond to something. It's not so much as a liberty issue as it is a... Um, charity issue okay the bible says by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned okay true liberty is spelled out in galatians i mean you read galatians chapter one to the very end it's pretty much spelled out what's liberty liberating us from the curse of the law when paul is calling out peter for what he's doing to his face, it's not a culture thing. It's Peter is trying to go back under the curse of the law. He's trying to act like a, like we're under the Old Testament, the Levitical laws. He's not acting like Jesus Christ died on the cross and gave us liberty from the curse of the law. He starts acting like he's still under the law. He can't fellowship with G Gentiles because they're not circumcised and they're not keeping the law. And our liberty is what? In Christ Jesus. I don't have to go over it. I've got plenty of studies on it. But as you get through, it talks about the curse of the law, and then it talks about liberty, using not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. And then Paul goes, and the lust of the flesh are these. And he goes through and talks about adultery, uh, drunkenness, and all these other sins of the flesh. See, right now they're trying to grab the worldliness and ways of the world and sin and try to slam it under liberty and say, we have liberty. Uh, it says, use not liberty for occasion of the flesh. And then it says, the lusts of the flesh are these. It's talking about sin. You're not to use sin and say and justify it and say, we have liberty. I mean, today you've got brethren saying that Hollywood uh, video games, we have liberty. Hollywood movies and TV shows, we've got liberty. Um... Satanic uh, anime, cartoons, we have liberty. Satanic style music, we have liberty. Uh, Hella days, we've got liberty. Uh, I've heard it once now too, they're saying whether you want to believe in a globe earth or a flat earth, we have liberty. It has None of that stuff has anything to do with liberty. 
okay? Liberty is being free from the law of sin and death. Why was the Levitical laws a curse? Why does it say the curse of the laws? Because the Levitical, Levitical laws, the laws of God, are written on every man's heart, and they're to guide us and lead us to the Christ, to the cross. And why is it a curse? Because the laws is thrown in our face, and we can't keep it. That's the curse. We cannot keep the law. Only one man ever kept the law and was perfect. There's one mediator between man and God, the man, Christ Jesus. He was the only one that was perfect. The curse of the law is that here's the Levitical laws, here's what you got to keep to make it to heaven, and, you, and God knows, and you know, you can't keep them. Adam got, became the, went under the curse of the law when he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Before, he was innocent. The Bible says where there is no law, there is no transgression. After he ate from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the law applied. He's now under the curse of the law. Okay, that's what the liberty is. I don't want to go into it too much, so I apologize, but they're coming out. I've heard somebody say, someone said that liberty, it's not so much a liberty issue as it is a charity issue. And a sister in Christ linked me these verses. So let's read them. Chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men. Remember the Bible says, be careful, uh, what does it say? Of good words and fair speeches. Why? Because it's used to deceive the hearts of the simple. We need to focus on the words of God. But though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass or as a tinkling cymbal. And that seems to be what's going on right now. You've got brethren that preach pride. You've got to drop your pride while they refuse to drop their pride. They preach you have to humble yourself while they refuse to humble themselves. Now they're trying to preach you need to have charity while they refuse to have charity, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good words and fair speeches. One of the lessons after I got, so one of my past sins got dragged up and thrown in my face again. One thing I wanted the brethren to learn from that past mistake I made was is that it's not about just words. It's about words and deeds. Do your life and your deeds line up with your words? Check yourself whether you be in the faith. It's not just words. It's action. Prove your own selves. Okay. And when you just talk, 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 and your life does not line up with your talk, and you start not having what true charity is, you become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Brethren look at you and go, wait a minute, you're, you're, you're saying something that sounds right, but your life isn't reflecting it. And when they get backed in the corner that their life isn't reflecting it, then they start messing up what true charity is. Okay? Verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy, remember we just read all the things that God's blessed us with. You get gifts, God gives you gifts to serve Him in the body of Christ. Okay. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And you see these people push, charity, you need to have charity, you need to have charity. Well, what is charity? Let's keep reading. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it proweth me nothing. When we get in here, you're going to find out what charity is. Charity is self-sacrifice. And you read right here where it says, Though I bestowed all my goods to feed the poor, remember the, um, the Pharisee? And the publican went down to pray, and though I give, a te I, I give all to the poor, and I put my life on, he does it to glorify himself. He does it for himself. If you're doing this, bestowing all my goods to feed the poor for yourself, to puff yourself up and make you look good and be some great one, and you don't have charity, you're not doing it because of self-sacrifice, you're doing it for yourself, that's not charity. If I get my body to be burned... And have not charity, it profit me nothing. If you're doing it for yourself, it's worthless. Charity suffereth long. 
and is kind, brothers and sisters in Christ, kind. Charity envieth not. Chari you know, envieth not, it's not selfless. It's not about me, myself. As we get through here, it suffereth long. It's not about me, myself, and I. If I have to suffer long for a brother or sister in Christ, I'll do it. If I have to suffer long for the lost world to, to um, be part of the ministry of reconciliation, like Paul did, I'll do it. Okay? It's not about me, myself, and I. It's about the people around you, whether they're saved or lost. It's about doing it for the Lord, no matter what the cost. Living for the Lord and standing for His Word, no matter what the cost. And you have charity while doing it. Charity is kind. It's not angry, it's not bitter, it's not hateful, it's not prideful, it's kind. Charity envieth not, charity vaulteth not itself up, puffing yourself up to thinking you're some great one. It's not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, me, myself, and I. Selfishness. It's so funny how, not funny, but it's frustrating how confusing that word can be because I, I slip up sometimes. I'm trying to say selfless, and then there's selfish. And since they both kind of sound the same when it starts out, you, you, you slip up sometimes and say the wrong word sometimes. There's selflessness where you're putting yourself out there, self-sacrifice, and then there's selfishness where it's all about me, myself, and I. I'm not going to sacrifice myself. Everybody else has to sacrifice their self. I'm not going to be a servant. Everybody else has to be a servant. All okay. right. Seek not her own is not easily provoked. Not easily provoked, brothers and sisters of Christ. That's a hard one. Sometimes people, if they know what buttons to push, brothers and sisters of Christ, they just know what buttons to push to get you all riled up, and then you have to calm down and say, Lord, please forgive me. I need to have true charity. All okay. right. Not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. The Bible says you're not to reward evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. So you have people coming out there saying, well, it's not really a liberty issue, it's a charity issue, but they're rewarding evil with evil. They're easily provoked. They're very prideful. Anger. Anger that turns it, they hold on to anger that instead of giving it to the Lord, and it starts turning into bitterness, and that bitterness turns into hate. Verse 6, rejoiceth not in iniquity. These people that are pushing, oh, they don't have charity, but we do. And it's like, but they're rejoicing in iniquity. Covetousness, which is idolatry. But rejoiceth in the truth. Hmm. Verse 7, beareth all things. Believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Endureth all things. Suffering for brethren. Suffering for the lost world to witness to them. Okay. How we treat the lost world. Well, we did this recently in a study, brothers and sisters. How we treat the lost world is important. That's how you're a light for Jesus Christ to the world. If you start acting like the lost world, getting bitter, getting angry, getting hateful, mocking, name-calling, belittling, being sarcastic, which is just mouthing off to the lost world, and I do it too, and I got to work on it, brother says Christ. I do it too. Okay, we got to work on these things. Endureth all things, true charity. Endureth all things. I will endure them treating me like junk. I will not turn around and treat them like junk. Okay. Verse eight. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, catch away the body of Christ, Jesus Christ. Then that which is in part shall be done away with. We'll have the mind of Christ. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. Kind of like what's going on right now. These, these men in ministry are acting like children and how they talk. Name-calling, mocking, belittling. The Bible talks about uh, railing, uh, whispering, backbiting, 
being sarcastic almost all the time. That's what a little child does. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. Now we do. Remember, when Jesus, that which is perfect, comes, then that which is in part will, shall be done away with. We will no longer be looking in a glass darkly. But we are now. We don't have the mind of Christ. We don't know everything. We don't see everything. And even then, we won't see everything. We're not God. But you understand what I'm saying. A lot of things, God's going to answer a lot of our questions and show us all this truth. Okay? Why these things happen? Why did this happen, Lord? Why did that happen? We don't understand. We look through a glass darkly. So we're supposed to just have charity. Regardless what's going on in this world, regardless what's going on in the body of Christ as it's fallen apart and there's division and everything, we're still supposed to have charity. We don't see what's going on. God does. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I'm also known. And now by the faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these three is charity. And people don't mistake in charity. Understand, you, when you truly correct a brother in Christ with love to edify him, to build him back up, if they're off the path, to get him back on the path, the Bible says the way, get him back into the way, the proper way. You can do it with charity, but you do it with love, too. I remember in a passage where Paul talks about, um, I'm, re I'm ready to spend and be spent for, and people like that part, I'm willing to spend, you hear this from people, I'm willing to spend and be spent. But the next part says, for, the more I love you, the more I abundantly love you, the less I am loved. When you, when you correct a brother in Christ with charity, you've got to understand your self-sacrifice. I told you the ultimate cost of correction, brother and sister Christ, is you might lose that brother in Christ. I lost a brother in Christ where I corrected him and said, listen, you're not qualified to be um, uh, uh, preaching and teaching and whatnot and doing all these Bible study videos and everything hardcore because your house is not in order. Now, he wasn't in the office of a bishop, per se, because we just read, just teaching. But still, when your house is not in order, uh, you're married to a lost woman, your children are lost, they're, being, uh, they're not being raised in the admonition of the Lord, uh, you're compromising to get along with that lost wife. I'm sorry, brother, but you're just, until God, God works things out and figures out what you're supposed to do, you just really don't qualify to be preaching and teaching right now. Not necessarily for the office of a bishop, but just because you're, light, you're making compromises. And how are you supposed to feed the church of God if you don't have your own house in order? That's what the Bible talks about. And I lost that brother in Christ. The fellowship with that brother in Christ. He stopped fellowshipping with me. But you do it with charity. It's self-sacrifice. Anytime you correct somebody, you put yourself out on the line. And Paul's like, the more I love you, the abundantly love you, I'm ready to spend and be spent. I'm willing to risk it all to get you back on the right path. Okay, we think charity, when we read this, we think charity like donations, like with charities. You think, well, uh, they donate and that's a charity, so that's what charity is, self-sacrifice. But as we read there, Paul said, you can give all the money to the poor you want, but if you're doing it with the wrong reasons, to puff yourself up, to make yourself look good for a tax return, um, that's not charity. You're nothing. Okay. Now, they say what I said before about uh, when they said it's not much of a liberty issue as it is a, a charity issue. Once again, by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. When I first got saved, brothers and sisters in Christ, the division that was going on in the body of Christ when I first got saved was over pre time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ, versus post and mid trip when I got saved. That was the big thing. Um, and it was causing division because the Bible teaches pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catch away the body of Christ. It's words if you say I believe it. It becomes action when you're looking for that blessed hope every day. So you can say it in word and then deny it 
with your actions. You're not living for Jesus Christ every day as if you could come back tomorrow. If you could come back today, then you don't truly believe it. It's just words. And that's what we're dealing with some of the brethren right now. But that was the division, okay? That's a Bible issue division about truth. And there was pride involved. There was respecter of persons. Because when you have pride, it leads to contention. The Bible says only by pride cometh contentions. And it's because there's respect of persons. People were not going off the scriptures. They were following a man. And if this man said it's post-trib or mid-trib, then it has to be post or mid-trib. They weren't setting down saying, Lord, regardless what these men are saying, they're, they're all making points. Some pretty bad points. Pathetic points. Some are good points. But Lord, you show me the scriptures and what absolute truth is. That's what I've been doing this past week. Okay. The next thing that came up that caused division in the body of Christ, and here's where we're going to talk about charity, is video games. There was a big split in the, in the group that we talked to here online and everything, and there was a big split over video games, Hollywood movies, TV shows. And here's the thing. If I have not charity, I am nothing. Their big argument is this, and what is their excuse that they use for this stuff? Anime cartoons, satanic style music, you know what they used as justification for those things? We have liberty. The same excuse some of the brethren are using today for worldliness and sin. Ways of the world, sin. Okay. They claimed, well we have liberty and if you try to call, call me out on my sin and put in the, and elevating the flesh, okay, uh, then I'm going to call you a liberty thief and a Pharisee and all kinds of names, liberalist and whatnot. Yeah, that's what they did, Brother Sir Rice. But let's get charity in here. Let's look at this as far as charity is concerned. The Bible is concerned, charity. They always come up and say, where are we commanded not, commanded not to play video games? That's not the question. The Bible, Paul says, if meat make my brother to offend, I'll eat no meat while the world standeth. Is it a sin to eat meat? No. Is it a sin for those video games? I found sinful, wicked things in every video game I've ever played. Okay. They try to put some kind of uh, wicked symbolism into it. Something. Okay. Uh, there's always been some push. But the point is, is if it make my brother to offend, I'll eat no meat while the world standeth. So let's think of true charity. Remember what true charity is? We read it. It's self-sacrifice. God comes first. His words comes first. I always say them both because they go hand in hand. If you're putting God first, you're putting His word first. If you're putting His word first, you're putting God first. God comes first. The brethren come second. The lost world comes third. And you, brothers and sisters of Christ, come last. That's true charity charity, self-sacrifice. I'm going to put myself last. That's true charity. So let's look at this. Video games, when, it, when that whole division started, it's not a command of God. doesn't please God. It's about pleasing you and pleasing the flesh. Let's look at this. It was causing division. It was offending the brethren. Because we had tons of brethren that had testimonies, brothers and sisters of Christ, testimony after testimony, how we were addicted to video games. We don't want to hear about video games. We don't want to be tempted by people talking about video games. We're offended that you're promoting video games and Hollywood movies like this some great thing when it's not. But it's causing division and it's, it's uh, offending the brethren. Now the Bible, true charity in the Bible is this. Self-sacrifice. You give it up. It's not a command of God. Remember instruction righteousness. The do's and the don'ts. If it's not a command of God for doing it, not that where does it say we can't do it, it's when it, where does it say we're supposed to do it. It's a necessity for living a life of Christ and living for Him every day. It's not. It's causing division in the body of Christ. It's, it's offending the brethren. So what is true charity? Selflessness. Self-sacrifice. You give it up, brothers and sisters in Christ. You give it up. But you had brethren in the body of Christ, I believe some were fake, some were saved, that they chose worldliness and sin 
over having charity. And they tried to hide their decision under liberty and misuse liberty. Yeah. Then that's charity. That's why I just want to throw that out there. If they truly had charity, they would have given up those video games for the brethren. If meat make my brother to offend, I'll eat no meat while the world standeth. It's not a requirement of God. I, it's, it's not a do for a Christian. It's just something I did for me for fun. Remember, fun is flesh. FF, fun is flesh. I'm giving it up for the brethren. Self-sacrifice. I'm giving it up. All right, you fast forward a little bit. Then the Godhead versus the Trinity came out and caused division because brethren were holding on to worldliness, pride, Okay, there's pride, leads to contention, which leads to division because there's respect to persons. Well, the person I'm of says the Trinity is the most important thing, and they don't want to go off Scripture. And it's the Godhead, is the true word title for God is Godhead. And the Godhead teaches God in one person, Jesus Christ. In Him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. God the Father is the soul. Jesus, the Son of God the Father, is the body. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God the Father, is the Spirit. And they're all in one in Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead. One person, body, soul, and spirit. person has to have a body, soul, and spirit to be considered a person. You can't get around that. But anyway, there was a big division on that. Because people didn't want to follow the scriptures, they wanted to follow men, respecter of persons. And we're going to get into those studies eventually, brothers. The worst uh, professing Christian out there is one that's a respecter of persons. They're not following Jesus Christ, and they don't hold this Bible as the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. They start becoming a, a worshiper of this man. I'm a worshiper of this man. Okay. She had people that were respecter of persons that they just wouldn't submit to the Word of God. And I love what a brother in Christ said once. He said, if you were stranded on an island and you didn't know anything about the Godhead and you didn't know anything about the Trinity and all you had was this book right here, the King James Bible, God's perfect written word in English... And you had to stu and you started reading it, all you would learn and find out is the Godhead. God in one person. Everything I just said. You would have no clue about the Trinity, God in three persons, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's nowhere in Scripture. All that stuff gets added after the fact. Trying to replace the true God of the Bible with pagan gods, plural. Okay. So we had that division, but guess what was involved? Pride respecter of persons, pride that led, and the respecter of persons that led to contentions, that led to uh, divi division, divide. Brothers and Christ, when you get saved, if you're newly saved and you're, getting, and you're getting tired of all this division, as we get closer and closer to the catching away of the body of Christ, there's going to be more division. People are going to start following, true people I believe are truly saved, are going to fall away to the world. And you're going to have some that were fake and frauds to begin with, and their, and their true colors are going to come out. They can only hide for so long until their true self comes out. Okay? But you have brothers that will fall to the way of the world, and they become part of the falling away. And then they're falling away. They're going to try to draw as many disciples after them, as the Bible says. And it's going to cause division. Let's get to this recent division that these people are saying, you need to have charity. It's not really a liberty issue, it's a charity issue. Holidays, brothers and Christ, holidays. <laughs> they call them holidays, but I call them holidays. Um, not holy days, the Bible, the Bible teaches what holy days are. But holidays, Christmas in particular. Okay. Let's think about this. I did studies after studies proving that Christmas has no basis in Scripture. None whatsoever. None. I even backed a mentor, a brother in Christ, that I believe is saved but fallen away. A brother in Christ, I backed him to a corner that when he was asked a question on one of his question and answer videos, he actually admitted that it has no basis in Scripture, it's just the traditions of men. But we have Romans 14.5, Romans 14.5. He refuses to go off 6, but Romans 14.5, let every man persuade in his own mind. But how does charity come in? He admits it has no basis in Scripture. It's not a command of God to live as a Christian. To live a life of Christ, in other words. It's not a command. It's something you do 
based off of traditions to please your flesh for fun. Flesh fun. Okay? Let's look at true charity here. According to the scriptures that we just read there. What is true charity in this situation? It's not biblical. It's not a command of God. If meat make my brother to offend, I'll eat no meat while the world standeth. Christmas is causing division. And this brother in Christ was purposely causing division. Purposely. All down, I look back the last few years, he's been purposely causing division. And then he blames everybody else for causing division. Well, you brought up charity. We're going to talk about charity real quick. Self-sacrifice. Putting yourself last. True charity. Christmas is causing division in the body of Christ. This goes for everybody who vehemently stands for Christmas and they've forsaken fellowship with brethren and turned their back on brethren and the word of God so they could have their Christmas, pagan Christmas. True charity in the Bible is self-sacrifice. Christmas is causing division. It's offending the brethren. There's brethren that used to be addicted to holidays and they gave them up. And one of the, so there's some brethren that they got the drunkenness. They love their holidays because they got drunk and partied hardy every holiday. And God got that out of their lives and they don't want anything to do with the holidays anymore. Holidays, praise the Lord. For whatever reason. But it's causing division in the body of Christ. It's offending the brethren. What's true charity, brothers and sisters of Christ? These are guys are saying, we have charity and you guys need to have charity. What is true charity in the Bible? Self-sacrifice. If they truly had charity like they claim, they'd give it up for the body of Christ. It's not worth it. Gone. Not worth it. I'm giving it up. Self-sacrifice. Doing it for the body of Christ. I'm doing it for the Lord. You see how that works, brothers and sisters in Christ? True charity is self-sacrifice. They don't have true charity. They have selfishness. I'm going to keep Christmas. I'm going to keep video games. I'm going to keep whatever. And I'm going to hold on to that, and I'm not going to let it go. Now, some brothers said, what about you having charity? I cannot sacrifice something I don't have. I can't sacrifice something I'm not doing. I said this before. Anything in my life that's physical, it's not a command of God that I'm supposed to do this as a Christian. 2 Timothy 2.15 I'm not letting go of this. It's a command of God. But video games? Holidays? Whatever that you're trying to hold on? Drunkenness? Because now they're trying to throw drunkenness under liberty. Um, all kinds of things are getting thrown under liberty. They're just so... That's, that's the fruit of this perverting liberty so you can throw sin and worldliness under it and just pervert it and pervert it and pervert it so you can throw anything under it. I cannot sacrifice something I'm doing and neither can you, brothers and sisters in Christ. So don't let them bully you okay, and guilt trip you into thinking you don't have uh, charity. Please check your life and make sure you have charity in abundance among the body of Christ and to the lost world when it comes to witnessing. Brother Jesus Christ, absolutely. But don't let them bully you, Brother Jesus Christ. They don't have charity. They are nothing. They have become nothing. Their testimonies are being ruined because they hath not charity and they're willing to let something like Christmas divide the body of Christ and they're purposely doing it. When I said earlier about saying I'm done with a certain brother in Christ that was a mentor, I'm done with him, okay, he's playing Satan's game. Satan likes to divide. He likes to destroy. He seeks to destroy. That's why the Bible says he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may destroy. He likes that he's got people in there that like to correct people with the intent of destroying them. Brothers and Christ, when I correct you, my heart's intent is to build you back up, to get you back on the right path. This right here, God's path. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ every day with the life that you're living. Make sure God's word is the final authority in your life, not man's words. 
man's words and have not charity. So I don't have to do a huge study to show that when they say you need to have charity, it's not really a liberty issue, it's more of a charity issue. Uh, by their words, thou shalt be condemned. They don't have charity, brothers and Christ. They don't have self-sacrifice. They don't have self-sacrifice. Turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I wanted to read this for you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Please, please, please understand, I'm not about division in the body of Christ. Okay? I want us to all, the Bible talks about being of one mind, of the same mind in Corinthians, of the same mind and of the same judgment. I want us to come together. And I believe only the one, one of the biggest things that's going to be able to save the body of Christ in these last days and slow down the, the falling away is house churches. True accountability. You won't find true accountability online. And I think that's what appeals to a lot of these, what I call online Christians. Kind of like when we talked about the Babel building system, Brothers and Christ, where you were a Sunday Christian. That was me, false convert for many years. I was a Sunday Christian. I put on my Sunday best. I love wearing suits and ties. And, and I went to the Babel buildings. And I got to play Christian one day out of the week, sometimes two days out of the week, Wednesday nights. Um, but you're a, you're a Sunday Christian. Well, guess what? I found out you have online Christians. They're only a Christian online, but if you see how they're really living their life, they look like the world, they act like the world, they laugh at the world's jokes. They're the ones causing division over worldly things. I got my world and I'm going to hold on to it. I'm not giving it up for Christ. I'm not giving it up for the brethren. I'm not giving it up for anybody. It's mine. Me, myself, and I. Mine, mine, mine. Like a little child. Like a little child. Okay. They're online Christians, and the reason they like to be online, and we'll talk about this probably in another study sometime, is about true accountability, and you're not going to find it online. We need to get back to doing things God's way. I'm pointing here, God's way. And I believe house churches is the way. When I first got saved, house churches was being preached and pushed. And now, eight years later, nobody really talks about house churches that much, and nobody really wants to do, I mean... I'm talking about men in ministry that used to preach hardcore house churches now are like, meh, I don't want a house church. Why? Because there's true accountability in a house church. Not online. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, I beseech you that ye present your bodies a living sac sacrifice. Remember what we talked about, charity? Self-sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. You know what's really causing the, the falling away today, Brother Side? It's conforming to the world. You start getting so comfortable down here. I like it down here. This isn't my home, Brother Sister Christ. This isn't your home, Brother Sister Christ. Jesus went to prepare a place for us. My home is up there where Jesus Christ is right now. I'm on a journey serving Him until He calls me home. But brethren are getting so comfortable down here that they start looking at, they take their eyes off Jesus Christ, where they've turned their back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, living every day for Him, or they get so distracted by news. The news, the news. I had to take a break from the news this week because I wanted to put my eyes on Jesus Christ and not be distracted by what's going on in the world. Be not conformed to this world. Don't take your eyes off Jesus Christ. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove, prove, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You mean we're supposed to prove ourselves? Yeah. You can set the, they can sit there and talk about pride is evil and you need to humble yourself till they're blue in the face. Prove it with the life you're living. Were you humbling yourself present tense? Well, it's not a liberty issue, it's a, it's a charity issue. Prove it! Where are you having charity? Where did you give up Christmas for the body of Christ? Where did you give up video games for the body of Christ? Where did you give up this? Where did you give up that? To keep from causing division and offending the body of Christ. Now, don't get me wrong. Truth will divide and truth will offend. But I'm talking about worldliness. Things of the world. Prove is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you conform to this world, you cannot prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And there's brethren who have fallen away, and they can't prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. They just can't. 
they've conformed to this world. And brothers in Christ, some of you are following them, and you're going the direction they're going. And I'm warning you, don't go that direction. If that means you've got to do like I did and put them without, so God can judge them and chastise them and get them back on the right path, then you put them without and say, I need to take a break from them for a while until they repent, drop the pride, have true charity, get their heart right with the Lord, and get back to living for the Lord 100%. Treating the ministry as if it's a life calling instead of just a way to make money, income. Okay. That's the conforming to the world. That's what the world does. You have all these hirelings out there that they're in it for the money and they turn it into a career. It's just a job. No, for someone who's truly saved and born again, when you get called into ministry of any kind, brother says Christ, it's a life calling. It's your life. You're doing it for the Lord. Mm -hmm. There's no separating it from your, like, I need my personal life or my family life and separating the ministry from your personal life and family life. It doesn't work that way. That's what the lost world does. You're now conforming to the lost world. Verse 3, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, every man, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, Brothers and sisters in Christ, I thank the brethren for the correction. I thank the brethren for the advice they've given me uh, and, uh, in recent events. I thank you. Okay. I never want to get puffed up and prideful to the point. Uh, you struggle with pride, but I never want to get puffed up to think that I'm some great one. I'm the only Bible-believing, God-fearing man on YouTube. I'm the only one that you can come to for the for the scriptures, and I'm the only. And I'll, I don't want to get that puffed up and be that I'm, I'm some great one. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. There's some brethren that are getting very puffed up and prideful. But to think soberly. Charity, brother says Christ. True charity is self-sacrifice. Now all of a sudden they're telling you that I'm supposed to have charity, but they don't have to have charity. I'm supposed to sacrifice something I don't have and I'm not doing, but they can keep what they're doing and what they have. That's not thinking soberly. That's the, that's the flesh talking. That's the world talking. According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Brothers and sisters in Christ, true charity in the Bible, self-sacrifice. Are they showing self true charity in the Bible? No. And I pray that I keep doing the best I can to show true charity, brothers and sisters in Christ. I talk, I talk to the Lord a lot lately. I, I want to do a house church. This is where we're going to start talking about the ministry. I'd like to do a house church. I'm not against online ministries, brothers and sisters in Christ, but there's no true accountability. And I miss... I want to be able to sing hymns. I want to be able to sing hymns with brethren together. I want to have account true accountability, physical, and spiritual, and financial accountability. Okay? With brethren. And you can only do that in a house church. You can't have that online. If any, I'm telling you, if any preacher stands up there and says that I'm 100% accountable to the body of Christ, they're deceiving themselves and they're deceiving you. You, you can't have 100% accountability online. You just can't. And that's why people love online, being an online Christian. Okay? I don't want to be just an online preacher and teacher. I want to be able to help the body of Christ physically. I want to have a house church. I want to be able to sing hymns together, pray together, physically help each other. With, you need help? I come over to your house to help you with something. And we talk about the Lord. We go fishing together and we praise the Lord and right now when I go fishing with a group of neighbors, and I praise the Lord every time I get weird looks, every time I catch a fish, I praise the Lord. And it's food. It saves me money. Okay? And it's a light to them and a testimony to them. I belong to Jesus Christ. But to be able to go out with brethren where they're all praising the Lord, we're all called, we could be all out there fishing and singing, you know, what was that one song? I, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Deeply stained from within, sinking to rise no more. Then the masters of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters that pulled me up. Now safe am I. 
Love lifted me. We're singing hymns as we're fishing. I would love that. I'm out here by myself. Okay, I'm never alone. Jesus is with us. You're never alone, brother of Christ. Jesus is with you. But true charity is self-sacrifice. You want to be part of a house church? That might require moving. I'm willing to move. Okay. But brother and sister of Christ, don't be deceived by these people that are just, they're trying to make a mess of scripture because they're trying to justify worldliness. They're trying to justify their sin. And now they're having to lie to cover up a lie, to cover up another lie. Well, now I got to make another lie to cover up the lie that I lied about this, that I lied about that. And I've got to cut. It's a nightmare. It's a complete and utter nightmare. Well, then we'll just belittle them. We'll do character assassinations. Uh, we'll mock them. Railing, you know. They just start turning their backs on the scriptures. Scripture says that's wrong. Don't do it. Now they're trying to justify it. In every way, shape, or form, they're trying to justify it. But look, Brother Says Christ, hymns. In the last week, I've been listening to Alexander Scorby talking with the Lord, uh, reading the Old Testament. I'm up to 2 Samuel this week. And I've been going through the New Testament again, and I'm in uh, Galatians. Galatians is a great book to prove that I line up with Scripture, uh, what true liberty is. Okay, it proves the Bible right, and that I line up with the Bible. Okay, it's being freed from the curse of the law, the Levitical laws. Okay, he corrects Paul, Paul corrects Peter, and then goes in and talks about, are you saved by the law? No. Okay, it has nothing to do with culture, it has to do with being brought brought back under the law. So it's a great book, and that's what I'm doing. I'm thinking I might be doing it another week. So this is just a Bible reading, but Bible studies will probably start up again next week if the internet's still up and running. I keep hearing stories sometimes. Uh, but I trust the Lord. Whatever the Lord wants, it'll happen. But brothers and sisters Christ, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ every day with, the, with, with how we're living, whether it's through charity, sanctification, ministry, doing work in the ministry, whether it's just doing work around your property or your job that you go to every day. We need to live for Jesus Christ every day and we need to keep our eyes on His coming, calling us home. Okay? I want to sing a hymn with you. It's called, What a Day That Will Be. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come No more clouds in the sky no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be there'll be no sorrow there no more burdens to bear no more sickness no pain no more parting over there. No more division. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look into his face. The one who saved me by his grace When he takes me by the hand And leads me through the promised land What a day, glorious day that will be What a day, glorious day that will be Remember the song, Brother Sister Christ, about This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. Brother says, Christ, what is your testimony going to be? We're going to get up to heaven. He's going to call us home. If you're saved, you're going up. No matter how far fallen flat on your face you are, if you're truly saved and born again, you're going up. 
when the collection away of the body of Christ happens, before the time of Jacob's trouble, when you get up there, what's your testimony going to be, brother and sister Christ? We're going to get to meet Paul for the first time, Peter, John, Timothy, Stephen, who was stoned, Titus, okay, Timothy. We're going to get to see uh, men of the faith in the past, okay? We're going to see, brethren, what's your testimony going to be? That you're praising the Lord all day long with the life that you're living? You're living for the Lord and His Word is your foundation in all matters of faith and practice, how you live that life? and that you stood for Jesus Christ clear up into the end? Or is your testimony going to be, well, I, I, was standing, I was standing for Jesus Christ hardcore, but that last couple years I, I went the way of the world, and I became part of the falling away. Is that going to be your testimony, brothers and sisters in Christ? Right? Um, I had a brother in Christ uh, that was I was talking to in the comment section that was talking about, I get so tired of the division. I do too, brother Jesus Christ. I don't want division. I'm not for division. But if I was doing something as far as having something, standing for God's word, I told you, I'm going to stand for God's word till the day I die. And if I'm wrong, you correct me through the scriptures. But if I have something in my life that I'm holding on to that's causing division in the body of Christ, you come correct me, brother and sister Christ, and you put me in my place. And you do it with love. Okay? Please, please, brother and sister Christ. I don't want to be like that. And I don't want you to be like that. I'm not for division. Um, like I said, I just believe that talking with the Lord and praying through the scriptures, God's way, there's supposed to be multiple bishops, multiple deacons, multiple elders. We're supposed to have house churches. We're supposed to have true accountability. It's not supposed to be the one-man show. You can do videos online and preach and teach online. That's fine. I'm not against that. I'm saying uh, we need account true accountability. You're not going to find it online. Okay. Um, we're going to find it by getting back to the old paths. Seek ye the old ways and live therein. We need to go back to doing things God's way, which is the house church way. Uh, coming together and being there physically. Like I said, if it means moving to be part of a house church, maybe that's just what we have to do. The sun's peeking up. I might have been on here for a while. I didn't mean to talk for so long, brother and sister Christ. I'm so sorry I didn't mean to talk for so long. Uh, just wanted to encourage you with true charity and showing that when the, there are people out there that the more they talk, the more they're condemning themselves. The more they're trying to grab and pervert this over here to justify what they're doing, then they get condemned. Well, then they turn around and grab this over here and try it. Oh, I got liberty, so that's what justifies it. No, liberty doesn't justify sin and worldliness, and they get condemned. Oh, well, charity, charity, charity will justify it. No, nope, charity doesn't justify what you're doing. It condemns you. It shows that you don't have charity. Be very careful not to be deceived, brothers and sisters of Christ. Stay in the Word of God, okay? Stay in the Word of God, and remember... We're going to have people falling away. And I, and I almost lost track of what I was going to say, Brother Jesus Christ. When that brother was talking to me, I had to tell him, I said, I had to point the finger here saying, I have some, those two brethren that fell away, my mentor, with the pride and the ego and the worldliness, I look back and there was tons of times that he did those in the past where he started choosing the world over the ministry, choosing the world over the brethren, and I kept my mouth shut. I didn't say anything because I did not want to cause waves and I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to risk losing fellowship and, you know, the cost of standing up and saying something. I, I was a coward. And I said, you know what, with them, for that brother in Christ that was a mentor, for him to get so prideful as he is today, it didn't happen overnight. There's blame to go all around, brothers and sisters of Christ, to all of us for not standing by the Word of God and not correcting Him with love and showing true charity from the very beginning, self-sacrifice. It might cost me my fellowship with that brother in Christ. That sun's really getting in my eyes. I might have loose fellowship with that brother in Christ, but I'm going to have true charity and do it with love, and my intent is to build him back up. My intent for that brother in Christ that was a mentor that turned his back on the Word and turned his back on the brethren 
was to get him back on the right path. I want my brother back. I want him back to a standing position. I want him putting God's word first, putting the brethren first, put our second, the ministry first, the brethren second. I want him back to living his life, loving the Lord, loving the brethren, and not putting the world first. Repenting of his sins, repenting on how he's treated the brethren, dropping the pride. That was my whole intent. Okay? And sometimes you got to do it sharply. If he's lying, you tell him he's lying. If he's deceiving, you tell him he's deceiving. You don't sugarcoat it. Okay. We have some blame to take, brothers and sisters of Christ. So, by not standing up, and I'm telling you, brothers and sisters of Christ, if I start going the way of the world, and I start holding things of the world, and I start holding sin, if I start turning my back on major doctrine, like, turning my back on the time, uh, looking for Jesus Christ to come back any day with the life you're living in this present world, looking for that blessed hope that he might redeem us. That's present tense. Every Christian from Paul to today is supposed to be looking for that blessed hope as if he might redeem us today. He might redeem us. We don't know. God has it all timed out perfectly, but we are not God. We don't know. We are to live every day as if Jesus could come back today. And it's a motivation to live for Jesus Christ every day. If you just got saved recent, recently, it's a motivation. To, I better get caught up. Jesus could come back any day. Sanctification, my knowledge of the scriptures, applying them, hiding God's word in my heart, living them. Look at these brethren that have been saved for years, and God's really cleaned up their life and everything. I want that. And I might not have years. It's a motivation when you look for Jesus Christ to come back any day now. It's a motivation. Okay? When you start telling people that Jesus isn't coming back, and he isn't coming back today, it's not a motivation. You're starting to move your way over to post and mid-trip. So, the ministry, we'll get back to doing Bible studies next week, Brother Sis Christ. I want to spend another week with the Lord and... Um, in the scriptures and prayer and everything. I just want to do a set and talk and an update. And I just really, God put it on my heart to do that and say, Brother Sister Christ, that's what real charity is. So remember, Brother Sister, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's what I want for the body of Christ. I don't want division. I don't want pride. I don't want anger that leads to business and hate. I don't want backbiting. I don't, that's why I'm not playing their game. I'm not playing their game. No more whispering. No more backbite. I'm not doing that. I'm not. I'm t I wasn't doing it to begin with, but I'm talking about whispering, um, whispering, backbiting, uh, sarcasm. That's what I look for. I'm going to try to get sarcasm out. I'm going to try. I'm not going to mock. I might have slipped up and mocked a few times, but I was already really trying to get mocking out of my life because that's not what Christians are supposed to do. That's what God does. That's not what Christians do. That's what God does. Um, and people in the Old Testament that represented God. As far as when they spoke, it's like God speaking. Today, we point people to this, the Word of God. Here's the Word of God. Okay. Um, so, I'm trying to work on some things in my life, too. And I pray for the same thing. If you've taken a break, too, praise the Lord. And this last week, if you took a break from everybody online and was just reading the Scriptures, praise the Lord. I'm going to do it for one more week. Uh, I'm really uh, wanting to get back into Bible studies. God's putting a lot on my heart to warn the brethren. We're going to get back to Bible ifs and Matthew for instruction and righteousness. We're going to go through the whole New Testament, and then we're going to go through the whole Old Testament Bible ifs, just to show that there's conditions in the Bible, and you've got to meet certain conditions for that to apply, to so help you when you read the Bible. And some of those Bible ifs are for today. Some of those Bible ifs aren't for today, but we can learn from them. Um, get back to the armor of God. There's still a lot of pieces of the armor of God we got to talk to because today we weren't, the brethren are not putting on the armor of God. They're becoming respecter of persons and they're expecting that person behind the camera to do all the fighting for them and they're not putting on the armor of God themselves. Okay, we're going to get back to the two warnings I'm going to give you about the most dangerous professing Christian out there. I'll give you a heads up, it's a respecter of persons and the most dangerous pr uh, preacher out there. And the most dangerous, and I'll give a heads up, the most dangerous preacher out there is not wolf in sheep's clothing. Okay, the most dangerous preacher out there is some, a preacher that once stood for absolute truth and now has fallen away. They're the most dangerous preachers out there because they've got all these bre brethren that are following them, and those brethren are falling in the trap of respecter of persons, and when that preacher falls away, they fall away with them. 
That's what makes them so dangerous. Okay. Um, so we're going to get into some of those teachings. We're going to get back to the other teachings. Word studies. Uh, I want to do an expository study on Galatians with you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and get into some word studies, uh, expository studies. We're just going to get back in the ministry and focus on this and looking for Jesus Christ every day with the life that we live. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, for all of you, and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.